This is part 26 of Angular CRUD tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to make the select list custom validator configurable and reusable. This is continuation to part 25. So please watch part 25 before proceeding. Now, if we take a look at this custom validator that we implemented in our previous video, notice we have hard coded the default option value minus one within our validator. Now, if we take a look at the department select list, here is the default option and its value is minus one. So our validator is going to check if the selected option value is minus one. If that is the case, then we know it's the default option and the validator is going to return this custom object to indicate that it has failed required validation. Now, this validator is going to work with any select element whose default option value is minus one. But if you have a select element whose default option value is something else other than minus one, then this custom validator is not going to work. Let's actually prove that. Let's change the default option value here from minus one to minus one zero one, or even maybe something like simply select. Now, when we do this, we also have to make the same change within our TypeScript class because we want that option to be selected when the page loads. So let's set the department value to select. Notice now when we don't select a valid department, we don't get the required validation error. Our custom validator is not working anymore. So let's look at the steps required to make our custom validator configurable and reusable. To make our custom validator reusable, we want to be able to pass the default option value from the view template to our custom validator instead of having that default option value hard coded like this. For that to happen, I'm going to make use of the custom validator selector. Now we are using this selector as a directive on our select element that we want to validate. Notice we are using that selector as a directive right here. So we are going to use this directive to pass our default option value from the template to our validator. And notice here our default option value is select. So I'm going to set that as the value for the directive. Now all that is left to do is read this value within our custom validator and validate against that value. To be able to read this value within our custom validator, we have to first create a corresponding input property. So the first thing that I'm going to do is import input from Angular Core. Next, let's create the property itself. Since this is a directive input property, the name of the property must match the name of the directive and the name of the directive is the same as the selector. So let's name our input property app selector validator and we know this is going to be of type string and since this is an input property let's decorate it with at input decorator. If you are new to input properties we discussed them in detail in our Angular 2 tutorial. Now the final thing that is left to do is remove this hard coded value minus one. Instead we are going to use this input property. So if the selected value is equal to the value that we have in our input property. So this input property contains our default configured value. So if the selected value is equal to that default value, then the validator returns this custom object indicating that the validation has failed. Otherwise it returns null to indicate that it has succeeded validation. Now, if you're wondering why are we using triple equals instead of double equals? Triple equals not only checks the value, it also checks the underlying data types. Now let's save our changes and then take a quick look at the browser. Notice now when we don't select a valid department, we get the required validation error. As soon as we select a valid department, the error disappears. So we have made our custom required validator configurable and reusable. Now we can use this custom validator with any select element in our Angular application. All we have to do is pass our default option value using this directive input property to our custom validator and the custom validator will take care of the rest. Now we already discussed a directive input property must have the same name as that of the directive and that is the reason we named this input property 
app select validator. For some reason, if you don't like this input property name, you can give it a different name using an alias. In this case, we are using this input property to pass this validator the default option value. So I would really like this property name to be default value. But we know this property is an alias for the directive input property app select validator. So we specify an alias like this. And now we can use this property name in our condition right here. Let's save our changes and quickly test our application to make sure it works exactly the same way as before. Notice even now it is working exactly the same way as before. Now if we take a look at our custom validator file, notice we have got two linting errors reported by our linting tool TSLint. Here is the first linting error and here is the second one. This one is easy to fix. All it's saying is file should end with a new line. So let's include a new line right here. The second linting error here basically says directive input properties should not be renamed. But if you want your directive input properties to be renamed so you can give them meaningful names, you can disable this linting rule. And there are two ways to disable this rule. One way is to click on this red squiggly line and then we see a bulb here and when we click on that we have this option and when we click on this option notice the rule is disabled and the red squiggly is gone. The other way is to disable this rule in tslint.json file. Notice the name of the rule is no input rename. Let's copy the name of the rule and when we scroll all the way down in the explorer window we'll find this file tslint.json. This file has all our linting rules. And the rule that we are interested in is this rule, no input rename. Notice its value at the moment is true. We want to disable it, so I'm going to change it to false. Since we have disabled this rule in tslint.json file, we don't have to disable it again here. So we can remove this line right here. So here is our reusable custom required validator that we can use with any select element in our Angular application. Thank you for listening and have a great day.